Welcome to my office. I've got everything I need. My squeaky desk chair, my Ikea table. This table has held many different roles in the course of its life in our house. It was a Lego table at one point. It was a craft table at another point. In fact, just recently it was holding up this air hockey table slash tennis, tennis, table tennis, ping pong. There's the word I was looking for. Ping pong table. You know, a cheap gift that we got at Christmas from one of those hardware stores when they were having a special. You know, this is where I've been living the last couple of weeks. This is where I've been getting stuff done. I've been writing my messages here. I've been working on these daily devos right here. I've been putting all sorts of other thoughts on paper as well too. And there are days where I get a lot accomplished. Lots of emails, lots of writing, lots of videos, lots of stuff gets accomplished right here at this desk. And then there's other days where I walk away going, what is it that I just did? You know, we're coming to one of those days in Holy Week. We're in Wednesday now. Jesus has come into Jerusalem. He's been staying in Bethany. Yesterday, he taught a lot. He got a lot of stuff done yesterday. He talked to a lot of people and a lot of great things were heard. Things that we still follow to this day. He spoke of the end of the world, the end of the age, when that day would come. Things that we study intensively. Jesus accomplished all of that yesterday. So what did he do today? Well, as far as we know, nothing. He didn't do anything. In fact, it's silent as to what Wednesday looked like. Most scholars agree that Jesus just hung out, which is a great lesson for us to learn that it's okay to have a boring day. It's okay to have a boring day. See, often we read scripture and we sit there going, these guys did so much, they accomplished so many things, they changed the world, oh, their lives were so exciting. But we have to remember that the totality of their life was condensed down to just a couple chapters. Jesus, the savior of the world, the Messiah, the longest gospel, 28 chapters long. The shortest, 16. Matthew wrote Jesus' whole life in 28 chapters. Mark wrote it in 16. It only took him 16 chapters to tell the story of Jesus' whole life. How many chapters would it take to write your story? If we go to the other individuals in the Bible who did many things, David and Abraham, their whole life, a couple chapters. Which helps us then understand it's okay to have a boring day. Why? Because one of the things that we have to remember is there were days where they didn't do anything. They had days that they walked away from going, what did I just do? So maybe you've had a number of those days recently. Well, here's what I want to challenge you. Let's take those boring days and let's start adding value to them because every day we have an opportunity to do something. I think, and I'd like to believe, that Wednesday of Holy Week was a day of preparation for Jesus. I don't know this. I'm just speculating. But I wonder if he wasn't getting prepared for what was to come because he knew exactly what was going to happen. And so how about you in those boring days? Are you getting prepared? One of the things that I think of is the fact that Jesus was getting ready to go into battle. He was about to go into the biggest fight of his life. And so I wonder if he spent Wednesday with his friends, hanging out, putting on the armor of God, with his coffee cup, or whatever it was that they drank at that time. He was sitting there, like any old day, getting ready for what was to come. In Ephesians chapter 6, it tells us about the armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand... Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the blessed breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 
Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions and with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. I think that Wednesday, Jesus was putting on the armor of God. He was getting prepared because he was about to fight a battle against the powers, right? Not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world and the forces of evil in every realm. And guess what? He was going to overcome. He was getting ready. It might have been a boring day. Not much happened. But I think a lot took place as he was getting prepared to be victorious at the cross. So how about your boring days? It's okay to have a boring day. But let's use those days to prepare as we continue to fight this battle in this world to be overcomers just like Jesus. I hope you're having a great Holy Week. I'll see you tomorrow.